epic commanders like Joan of Arc and Sun Tzu are so powerful that they should almost be considered legendary commanders well that's okay that's actually wrong it used to be true up until about a year ago but recently it seems like epic commanders have literally just fallen into obscurity even some of the newer epic commanders seem like they're just completely useless in the game so today we're going to talk about what actually happened to epic commanders why we never see them anymore and which of them if any are actually still useful in the late game what's going on guys cheers what drink do you think i have in here i want you to comment it down below drop a thumbs up while you're down there it helps with the algorithm and it's free so what happened to using epic commanders up until about a year ago it seemed like commanders like Sun Tzu and Joan of Arc sort of had a little bit of use left in them and this was something that a lot of players appreciated especially free to play players because commanders that are epic are super easy to expertise it's easy to get the universal heads to them and you can get them from gold keys relatively easily but it feels like today we just literally never see them and also content creators just don't talk about them anymore some of my most popular videos on this channel are talking about some of the best legendary and epic pairings and the reason for this is because this is relatively cheap to build you can use one legendary and then one very cheap free commander to create yourself a pretty good army but that strategy it hasn't really been used that much lately now later in the video I will talk about some pairings that I think you can use with a legendary commander and an epic commander but your mileage is really going to vary and unfortunately in the season of conquest this strategy is all but pretty much gone except for a couple of niche instances so what actually happened what happened to epic commanders why aren't we talking about them anymore well Lilith pretty much killed off epic commanders by implementing something that we're all familiar with and that's called the museum now the thing about the museum is that this is a system that's essentially a way to buff commanders that were obscure and basically out of date old commanders from season one from the beginning of the game and kind of bringing them back up to a somewhat usable level with power creep now the thing about the museum here is that this is a system that you can progress through relatively easily as a free-to-play player or at least you can easily obtain some relics for some commanders that you actually would care about using and the good thing about the relics here in the museum is that you don't have to expertise the commander in order to gain the benefit of that relic so for example if you have a 5511 martel and then you get to season of conquest and you buy the relic boom you immediately get 30 percent more stats for that commander even though you didn't fully take him to expertise and that's a lot of stats 30 percent of stats is huge to be able to get just right on your commander instantaneously but the thing about this is that pretty much all of these relics are providing the same amount of stats that epic commanders get or more of course relics like El Cid's are still not very great but if you look at Cao Cao for example that's another great one where you can get him to like 5155 or 5151 or something like that and then you buy the relic and boom you immediately get 20 percent more health plus more skill damage on the active skill and this is the reason that well one of two reasons that we no longer see epic commanders because even if you have these incomplete gold key commanders just lying around doing nothing if you put a relic on them for free they're immediately going to gain a ton more stats and epic commanders never got an equivalent buff we saw the museum come and buff old obscure legendaries but we don't have an equivalent system for epic commanders and i think that that would be pretty cool for example i would much rather buy a relic for my sun tzu than i would for somebody like charlemagne right i just feel like sun tzu is a cooler commander and i would be more likely to use a sun tzu than i would to use charlemagne or barca for example like these commanders to me are relatively useless so when you look at a commander like pelagius like at the beginning of the game for season one and two of kvk maybe he might fit in your rotation somewhere but an incomplete cao cao that you've been collecting over time with this relic is just gonna perform better it's just going to so relics were pretty much the beginning of the end for epic commanders but something else happened in rise of kingdoms that essentially put the final nail in the coffin and that was the introduction 
of this new tier of legendary commander and when we talk about that we're talking about commanders like Scipio and like Nevsky and pretty much every commander that they've released after that okay Nevsky marked a pretty big and drastic change in the level of power that you get from a legendary commander and one way that I can tell which commanders fall into this category is if they actually shine gold. I made an entire video about this a long time ago, but if you click on Nevsky or you tap on him, you'll see a gold shine go across him. Every single legendary commander from Nevsky and onwards has that same gold shine. You can look at Boudica, you click on her, it's going to be the same thing. Same thing with CPO. And again, you can watch my video where I talk about this, but this new caliber of legendary commander really put the, the nail in the coffin for epics. Why is that? Well, if you look at CPO as a commander from one, 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 that's just just unlocking cpo and getting him to four stars okay meaning you just unlock him you bring him up to 30 or 40 or whatever you unlock four stars you could do that very easily for free to play without putting a single legendary commander sculpture into cpo he is better than sun tzu out of the box okay we can go through this together he has a three target aoe that deals 1500 damage factor we look at sun tzu yes he does hit five targets and he has a rage engine but the damage factor is only about 65 percent that of cpo i mean even that's including the second da the secondary damage you deal in the next turn but on top of that cpo has a 10 percent health reduction for those three targets which is pretty big now also cpo does reduce the damage per target you know by 15 percent and all that stuff but moving forward we get 20 percent of infantry attack three percent march speed and an additional two percent outside of territory not much there but that's 20 percent of infantry stats and if we look at sun tzu he only gets 10 percent of infantry health and i would say infantry health is better but it's still half the stats and you might say okay well sun tzu takes 10 percent less damage but great news Scipio ain't done either okay because he also gains 10 percent infantry health and he has a 10 percent chance of dealing 750 additional damage factor now that's 250 over time for three turns so once again we see more damage out of Scipio, which he was already ahead and then we look at his fourth skill just by unlocking this you have a 50 percent chance of reducing skill damage by 10 percent and giving you and allies a three second shield of 250. Now that's a small shield, I, I get it. But like just by unlocking Scipio, you have a better commander than Sun Tzu. So what are you supposed to do in that scenario? There's really no scenario where you would ever use Sun Tzu when you're in a situation where you can just get a commander right away like Scipio and he is out of the box better with almost zero investment. All you're investing in is some experience and a couple of gold stars. And if you compare Nevsky to Pelagius, you're going to have a similar outcome. And I'm not going to go through all this with you because I think you guys already understand, but simply by unlocking Nevsky out of the box, you have a better commander than a fully maxed out Pelagius. You don't have to do anything to Nevsky to just make him better than using Pelagius. And now that it's been a few commander release cycles, just like that, where we keep getting these powerful commanders like Joan of Arc prime and Boudicca prime, for example, free to play players would be better off filling their armies with a secondary commander that hasn't even gotten a single sculpture invested in it rather than using some of these old and outdated epic commanders and lilith knows this right because you look at commanders like sun tzu and like joan of arc these are commanders that are historically speaking very prominent like these are very famous historical figures right and yet they find themselves trapped in the epic tier same thing with cpo for example and i think lilith realized this and felt a little bit bad about putting such famous commanders in such an unused and garbage category essentially and in order to compensate for this they essentially re-released those same commanders and just put a prime next to them and now we have commanders that are essentially the same exact commander but just more powerful and brought up to that legendary status they've literally re-released the commanders uh instead of actually going back and you know making their epic counterparts more powerful and that's fine i've said in previous videos i don't mind the prime versions of these commanders i think it's cool they have new artwork they're more powerful and it's a breath of fresh air i think that's fine but even lilith knows with the introduction of primes that epic commanders are pretty much dead they're done they're over with and we're probably never gonna see any use for them ever again except for a few commanders that i think still have a little bit of usage okay first let's talk about belisarius belisarius is a commander that i use for one thing 
and one thing only and that is ladies and gentlemen grabbing runes across the map i actually have a preset built with belisarius and genghis khan this is a the preset here has a single tier one horseman and this is what i use if i want to go and grab a rune really quick the other march that i use also is lancelot with dragon lancer same thing one tier one horseman uh but the, this is an epic commander because of strictly march speed that's the only reason that you would do use this i have the triple line formation here uh th that's the only thing you would ever do with belisarius these days is pretty much go and grab runes so that's one thing you could look forward to with your belisarius he has the mobility tree and that's what makes him great as the primary there um the other commander that i want to talk about and there's a couple more so stay tuned okay uh joan of arc the original joan of arc is still technically a commander that has some value okay her buffing sk uh, skill here is extremely good it just is and the fact that you get 25 percent more normal attack damage is actually insane okay for an epic commander uh, i don't think she competes with all of the other legendary commanders that are doing an insane amount of buffing like for example mulan was essentially just a legendary version of joan of arc okay that's pretty much what she was although the problem with her is you sort of have to expertise her to make her noticeably better than than epic joan of arc so i digress with that one but i made a video recently where i talked about how my alliance constantly gets insane trades when rallying passes flags forts etc if you missed that video it's a 500 iq video go ahead and check that out it's a uh, video where i talk about how we always win rallies but joan of arc is part of that strategy and essentially the tldr is that whoever is rallying a pass can also have a nearby joan of arc attacking somebody who leaves your alliance and Joan of Arc will then buff that that rally and this buff is of course absurd but realistically you wouldn't really use Joan of Arc in the open field and one of the things is if you're a free-to-play player right and let's say you're pretty much out of troops you're in kvk you want to help on the field but you just can't you don't have the you don't have the manpower okay one thing that you could do is you could slap a Joan of Arc behind a commander such as I don't know Harold or Charles Martel this is somebody that free-to-play players use often or maybe somebody like Saladin right uh, if you have a Charles Martel with Joan of Arc behind him uh there's a chance that some players won't hit that Charles Martel right they'll just decide eh, it's not worth it Charles Martel he's pretty tanky he does a lot of counterattack damage it's possible that there's a Herald behind it that's going to be very prickly and deal a lot of damage right you don't want to really hit a Martel Herald if there's other things in the open field like Wan Yu that you can hit like CPO that you can hit there's a lot of other higher targets than hitting a Martel right so if you throw out a Martel with a Joan of Arc behind him it's possible that players will just assume that there's something behind that Martel they don't want to hit uh and that'll kind of get you away with hiding your Joan of Arc and this will let you buff your nearby allies okay now of course obviously to do this you have to be attacking somebody okay so you have to fire off those active skills and that's that's the downside and your trades are going to be really bad you're really sacrificing your own army for the benefit of your allies and again this is really only a strategy that I that I would recommend if you're pretty low on troops and there's really nothing else you could possibly do you could at least do this and buff your allies and help them out also she's still great for gathering so you're going to use her a ton i'm not going to talk about the other gatherers but i think it's pretty self-explanatory that like matilda obviously you send her to the alliance plot right because you get the 10 percent extra we all know this okay now sun tzu sun tzu is a commander that you know from the epic tier he is one of the best epics okay uh, but I really feel like he's just so outclassed these days that I really struggle to find a way where I can recommend him even to free to play players. I just don't really see a use for Sun Tzu anymore, which that which sucks, right? It really does suck. Um, if you were going to use him in season of conquest of all things, you would have to do the similar thing like you do with Joan of Arc and just hide him, right? You could never use a Sun Tzu primary. It's never going to work. He will instantly get swarmed and melted. You'd have to hide him behind somebody, but really like you would have to do like a CPO primary Sun Tzu secondary. And like, that's the only way that you could sort of do okay. Uh, and that's really just because CPO is so insane. Uh, and Sun Tzu just gives him a little rage engine and bonus skill damage right now he has his own AOE of course which is also nice but it's a low damage factor so at the end of the day Sun Tzu yeah if you're a free-to-play player it's your first season of conquest maybe you can find a use for him but really I'm looking forward to Sun Tzu Prime I'm looking forward to like Lilith come on we already know that it's gonna happen okay you know it I know it everyone knows it we know Sun Tzu Prime is gonna be a thing 
so why don't you just drop it on us Lilith? i'm ready for it i want him to be broken i want him to be op okay i got a ton of legendary commander sculptures saved up i would love to invest in the sun Tzu prime and i feel like the design that they would have for him would be super cool now let's talk about buy bars because buy bars surprisingly is is pretty good for an epic now same thing as as sun Tzu, and i would say sun Tzu is still better than buy bars but from a cavalry perspective if you need a cavalry commander and you only have epics available i think buy bars is the best and the reason for this is because his active skill has some good utility okay first of all five target aoe that's pretty rare in the game okay second of all thousand damage factor that's not that much but it's not reduced by 15 percent for each additional target which is often the case for most aoe's in the game so the fact that you can hit five targets without reducing the damage is actually insane and if buy bars hits five targets versus isong ye hitting five targets buy bars technically is dealing more skill damage per target except for the fact that isong ye has the 50 percent skill damage boost on his fourth skill so that it's more of a fun fact than actually practical but still you would be dealing 5,000 damage factor to five targets which is not the same as isong ye i think isong caps out at about 900 damage factor across five targets and i know if you do the math you're gonna think i'm an idiot but the fifth target with isong is actually not reduced by 15 percent it's reduced by five percent because otherwise hitting five targets would deal less damage than four targets so lilith on the back end change that a lot of you probably aren't gonna believe what i'm saying right now unless you watched like an old wick gaming video who actually proved it but anyway i'm going off on a tangent regardless buy bars hitting five targets nice damage factor nice aoe and he decreases their march speed by 50 percent for two seconds that's very good that's deceptively good okay because that's gonna snare the target it's gonna make him slow for two seconds where you'll have a chance to really swarm them down okay without this it might be harder to slow them down and catch them and they could just run away so very good stuff there also 20 percent of stats and a little bit of healing factor when you're leaving but other than that he's really not great he's really just there for big aoe from an epic and uh and a nice little snare now let's talk about bjorn okay bjorn came out and he was actually pretty good uh and, and i feel like he's good in season like one and two of kbk but after that i really don't see any use for him it, it kind of sucks right because he had this really interesting buff here or, or debuff i should say that makes enemies take 15 percent more skill damage but then we got imada and and he's just better right like like he not only is it not a cone it's a circle so okay it's a circle it hits five targets instead of three it's the same duration but it's all damage for 30 seconds and if he's secondary which he always will be then they also gain 50 for less rage for three seconds that's 150 rage that's huge right so literally bjorn was popular or, or not popular but he was relevant as an epic commander for like a year and then amata came out and just was a way better debuffer with that active skill now these are two commanders of two different troop types so if you're looking to do like infantry maybe you would still do inf maybe you'd still do bjorn also bjorn actually deals damage with his active skill and his th fourth skill whereas amata just pretty much doesn't deal any damage at all like his damage output is insanely low but he also has a really interesting debuff here where you have a 10 chance to debuff a target and reduce the skill damage they deal by 15 percent it's pretty good it's a long cooldown okay and it is it's only one target it's not aoe so it's interesting you definitely could use a mod in in season of conquest as a secondary commander for the same reason as you would as you would use joan of arc right like if you have no really no troops left you just want to provide some support and utility to the open field you could throw a mod up behind like i don't know a song yay or something and just like fight and you have one skill cycle before you get swarmed to death <laughs> or you could do again charles martel primary a up secondary obviously and, and you're not gonna put archers in that you're gonna put all infantry but maybe you could just do a mixed army or something i don't know but really you would just be using it for that that active skill and that's pretty much it so just as a recap in season of conquest the only epic commanders that you would ever even consider pretty much ever okay would be a mod up maybe bjorn and that's a big maybe buy bars for the aoe and snare joan of arc for the utility sun Tzu for the if you have literally nothing else and belisarius to go ahead and grab runes i can't see a reason to ever use any of these other commanders obviously lohar doesn't count and the gatherers don't count either because of course you're going to use the gatherers forever but yeah it's a it's a sad state for the epics right now uh the epic commanders really i would love to see a buff to them i know it's not going to happen lilith is i mean why would they ever do that right legendary commanders are where they make their money okay we know that you know what i know it everyone knows it and they don't even have to right because again you you don't even have to invest in the legendary 
to get a better commander than an epic you could simply unlock one and already have a better so it's not even like you have to do any investing to get a better commander you might as well just start working on a legendary like cpo anyway guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel it gets this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below not only what you thought i was drinking but also what epic commander do you want to see come as a prime commander next i would love to hear from you guys i feel like sun tzu is overdue man just give it to me and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace